Hey, this is Rob, and I just wanted to make a quick uh, tutorial or demo to show you how you could use user parameters to make this kind of parametric frame. It's got a uh, pentagon shape to it, and the idea is that it's made from timbers that have some woodworking joinery cut in them. So there's a lap joint on either end of each one of these beams, and everything fits together. So the idea is, if we look at the actual design, when I go to modify and choose change parameters, I should be able to change some of these parameters that I've set up. So it becomes, instead of an octagon, maybe a hex or uh, a pentagon or even a triangle. And you can see as I change that or uh, maybe the, um, the inside dimension from here to here, this uh, inner length, um, if I change that, it's still, it adjusts and I can also change the size of the beam. Maybe it's 12 by instead of six by. And so whatever I do, you can see that the, uh, joinery still fits properly and, uh, that's the important bit. So I'll show you how to do this and I'll also show you what this, uh, strange looking formula is for this fourth, uh, user parameter here. So let's get started. I'll just create a new design. And then the first thing I'll do is make a new component. I'll call this beam. And in fact, it's going to be the same component over and over again. I'll use this one beam component and then replicate it using a circular pattern. So I'm inside the beam component. You can see here, this shows that it's activated and I will create a sketch on the top work plane. To start out, I'm basically just going to draw half of that, uh, beam shape. And so I'll start by hovering over the origin and come down a bit as my starting point. And um, it's a little bit small here. So I'll just try and get it somewhere close to about 24 inches. If you make it really small and then you change the dimensions really drastically, it becomes uh, kind of hard to deal with. So I'm making it kind of roughly about the size that I want and about the shape that I want. And here I've got a complete profile because it, uh, I enclosed all of the uh, edges here. And uh, I'll hit escape and um, click on that one edge here and change it into a construction line. So now I've actually lost the plane, but that's okay. This is just going to be a mirror line. All of this other stuff will get flipped over and mirrored to the other side. There's one more piece that I need. I'll use the line command and just draw this um, cutout that's going to be here for the lap joint. Now those two edges need to be um, parallel to each other, so I'll hold down shift, select each of them, and choose the parallel constraint. So I'm about there. I mean, I just need to mirror this to the other side, but I do want to have some dimensions. So this seems like a good time to actually create those parameters that I had in the other design. One of them is going to be the number of sides, and for this there should be no units. And I could say maybe we'll start off with a pentagon. I also need the size of the beam. Uh, I'll just call this beam size. Obviously, if you wanted this to not be a square section beam, you wanted a different uh, height and width, then you could be a little more elaborate here. But I'm just saying this is a six by six. And then uh, the final thing for now is the interior length. So if we're looking at the inside of this polygon frame, I wanna know what the distance is from one corner to the next. And I'll say to start off with, that's 24 inches. So there's a fourth, uh, fourth user parameter here, and I'll show that in a moment. Okay, um, let's make some of these dimensions happen. So I'll choose D, or uh, I can either press D, or I can choose this icon here to create uh, sketch dimensions. I'll say that the distance from here to here should be uh, beam size. And also the distance from here to here, this angled dimension should be beam size so that I know another piece will fit in there properly. Um, the interior length that I specified is from there to the opposite side. So I think it's time to make that mirror. So I'll go to the sketch menu and choose the mirror command, and then just choose the four sketch curves that I want to mirror, and then choose the mirror line. There it is. And then last dimension, I'll just choose uh, the dimension can command again, and say the distance from that point to that point should be the interior length. Now you can see it's no longer centered over the origin just because I kind of did that inferencing in the beginning with the, the uh, hovering over the origin. It doesn't mean that it's actually going to keep it there. So what I need for that is a constraint. So I'll move this kind of uh, over a little bit and then I'll choose that point at the top and I'll choose uh, this origin point by holding down shift and clicking it. And then I can choose the horizontal vertical constraint. So uh, now I can move down a bit 
And that's, that's about it. I'll hit stop sketch and I'll extrude this. So I'll either hit the E command, the E key or choose the extrude command up here. And I'm just going to extrude the whole thing for now. And, uh, the beam size is the user parameter to use for that. And then I'll swipe up with the right mouse button so that I can repeat that extrude command. I can't get to that face underneath unless I hold down the button and there's the profile right there. How far up should I uh, make this cut? Well, that's beam size divided by two. And then the other side is the same thing. So let me swipe up again and uh, hold down the mouse button. There's that profile I need. And it's the same distance, beam size divided by two. The only thing is it's going to cut this on the bottom of the beam, the same as the other one. I actually want to cut the top. So what I can do is just choose offset plane, and that'll cause the cutting to start uh, halfway up if I make the offset beam size divided by two. So you can see what's happened there. It's making that same cut, that same half of the beam cut, only it's starting halfway up. So that's one way to do it. Now I've got the whole thing. I can just hide the sketches and there is my beam. So what I'll do is I'll uh, activate the root component by choosing activate here. And I will make my uh, circular pattern. So I go to the create menu, hit pattern and choose circular pattern. My uh, component that I want to pattern, you have to make sure this says components and the object I want is this component. And then for the axis, I can just choose this origin axis here. The number or quantity is uh, another parameter I made. It's called sides. And it seems to be working. It has the right number of sides. They look like they're at the right angle from each other. Well, they don't, do they? Because I didn't specify the angle. So we'll fix that. But also, it doesn't. they don't seem to be landing in the right place. So let's hit OK. And uh, let's go back and right-click and edit that sketch. So there is a detail I missed, right? Like I need a dimension that tells what this angle should be. So I'll hit dimension, click those two sketch curves. And this should be 360 divided by sides. Okay, if I hit stop sketch, you can see now they look like they, they're at least at the right angle, but they're obviously not the right distance apart. So let's um, edit that sketch one more time. And what we can see is this distance is what matters. If I pull it down and hit stop sketch, you can see now they're separated. So what I really need to know is what the distance is from the origin to, let's say, this edge here. If I knew that dimension, then back in the sketch, I could actually... Uh, make a dimension from here to here and everything would work out. So I'm not a math person and uh, I don't remember anything from geometry really. So what I did was I Googled and here's the web page. So you can see it's basically um, describing what it calls the in-circle of a polygon. That's the distance from the center to one of those uh, edges. And um, here's the formula. It's in radius equals the length of one of the sides, which we have, uh, divided by two times the tangent of uh, 180 over the number of sides. So we have all of those variables. We have all the information we need. And all we have to do is just enter it into Fusion 360 as a user parameter. So uh, let's go back to modify, change parameters, and add one more parameter, which we'll call in circle or in radius. And um, I'll just copy. I mean, I, I don't even need to understand the formula, essentially. I'll just copy it. So it's the uh, in length uh, over 2 times the tangent of 180 divided by sides. So that's a direct translation of what the website says. I'll hit OK, and now I can use in radius as my user parameter for this dimension here. Now when I hit stop sketch, everything lines up. And just to make sure it all worked, I can go to the modify menu, change parameters, and change something like uh, the number of sides. Oop, <laughs> choosing two is not a good idea, but uh, three sides is the minimum, I think. Uh, we can also change um, to maybe seven sides and uh, a 30 inch interior uh, distance here and then um, maybe make a 12 by 
beam. So this should all still work. At some point you can break it, of course, by putting in numbers that don't work out, but um, looks like it's working. Uh, the last thing I'll show you is that all of these components, since I patterned a component, they all are the same. So if uh, you can see it's the name with a colon and a number after it, those are different instances of the same component. So if I, if I turn on sketches for one of them, it turns on sketches for all of them. Or if I wanted to create a hole in one of them, uh, let's activate this first component and then create hole. And maybe I'm going to uh, create a hole right in the uh, center of this beam. And uh, let's say the diameter should be half an inch and um, it should go all the way through. Hit OK. You can see now I have this hole that goes through each of those components. And uh, maybe that's not desirable, but in this case it's perfectly fine because maybe I have rods that go through all of these. Uh, but essentially these are all the same component, just different instances of it. So anything I do to one will happen for all of them. So uh, that's about it. This is how you could use user parameters to make something like this that's customizable and the joinery uh, adapting to make sure that it all still works. And also how you could use uh, user parameters in a circular pattern. Hope that helps.